Hello everybody, happy April 18th, 2020. My name is Christopher Saunders and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show we have the assistant coach for the post men's basketball program here in Waterbury, because I am in Waterbury. His name is <laughs> Brendan Phelps, Coach Phelps. Thanks so much for being able to come on today. Hey man, Chris, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, I've been tuning in to your other interviews and it, it's great what you're doing and guys like yourself who are giving people like me at home and <laughs> something to break up the day with a little bit. So I, I, I'm happy to be here. I appreciate you having me, man. No problem. And you know, it's a pleasure to be able to share the Connecticut talents because there is talent in Connecticut and people need to know that. And you are one of them. You, hey, <laughs> I, I know you're laughing, but let's be real here. You were a talent back when you were playing for St. Paul and then now as a coach for post. Uh, yeah, man, I, it, <laughs> I guess you want to use the word talent, I, I, I would use different adjectives, but um, mm -hmm. I, I'm humbled. My playing experience was fruitful, and and, and uh, you know now the coaching thing is, has been fruitful. So mm -hmm. I've been very lucky. It's been very difficult, uh, and certainly my my road is not over yet. You know I'm still trying to climb, but uh, it it certainly gives me a, a much a much better appreciation for the game, having played it at a high level, and then now coaching at a high level and um, you know, it's, that, that's, that's one of the biggest things that I take away from basketball is my ability to appreciate both ends of that thing. Um, you know, when I started coaching, I was 21 years old when I got hired, I just finished playing. Uh, mm -hmm. so I, I kind of was, I've kind of grown myself as my, my coaching intellect, I guess has. Now, what I really want to talk about with you before we go into the, you know, your time with post, I really want to talk with you about you know basically what you did with St. Paul because being able to coach under your father probably had its moments where maybe you guys kind of butted heads but for <laughs> what you were able to do with that program you were there for 12 uh, no correction 13 years 13 but years. 12 of the yeah. years they made the you know consecutive CIEC state playoffs talk to me about that because I think that in and of itself is something that it's astounding that a school as you could say small as St. Paul was able to do yep, that yep. consecutively. Now, you yep. know, with it being 14 consecutive CIC playoff appearances. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and listen, there's plenty of successful programs in the state of Connecticut who probably have longer runs than that. But I think what you, what you said rings true. You know, at one point in time, we were dealing with 90 boys in the school. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, my father has been, this was his 29th season as the head coach there. He's been there 40 years total. He was a, an assistant for 11 years. Uh, and when he got the job in 1991, they had had a run where they were really good. He won state championships as a player in the 70s. He won state championships as an assistant in the 80s with those teams. He coached Steve Peichel. He was a part of all those teams. And in 91, the head coach for any territory, and, and my father tells me this all the time, and, and I'll never forget it. He says, Stevie, I'm, I'm, I'm retiring, you know, and my dad says, Franny says, I, I think I'd like to give this thing a crack. And Franny says to him, Stevie, I'm out for a reason, man. The cupboard is bare. <laughs> and my dad, God bless him. He's just, you know, he says, I think I want to give the thing a crack. So he, he took the gig in his first year, they went one to 19. Uh, and then his second year, I think in 92, they won three games or two games. But his first few years were scarce. And then in 96, he had a kid by the name of Sean O'Brien, was a really, really good player. And they won 16 games, got to the class semis, uh, class S state semis. Um, and, and I think they beat the number one seed that year, uh, which was Summers, who had the Tab brothers at the time. And Colin, who's the head coach at Western New England, and Sean Tab, who's an assistant at Brandeis, I believe, both great guys. Um, but 96 was kind of the year, and, and they got a little bit better. And then I came along and, and we were awful, you know, so as, as talented as I was, uh, we, we didn't win many games. And when he hired me, uh, and, and I was 21, I had just finished playing. And I guess for me, it was a personal thing. Cause I had been there, I'd gone to school there and I had played for the guy and I knew firsthand the amount of time that he puts in and the amount of effort and the passion he has for it. And, and I felt responsible. I felt a responsibility to a degree to do everything that I could to help him be successful because I felt that he deserved to be successful. 
successful. You know, you, you look around, you see guys who coached a different sport every season. And, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but, you know, th there's, there's different paths and avenues. And for my father, a guy who spent 12 months at that craft, spent his personal time, he'd go to college practices, he goes to, um, you know, to different clinics, and, and he spends a lot of time over the years to kind of be the best version of himself that he could be. And as much as that's all well and good, you got to have some players. Um, and he, was, he didn't have a lot of great players. So when I came in, my thing was, all right, I, I didn't do enough as a player to help this guy win. I got to do everything I can as a coach. And at that point, at 21, I knew I wanted to coach in college. So for me, selfishly, I was always going to kind of do more than I needed to do because it was going to make me better. And after our first year or two, um, we had a freshman class that came in that was pretty good. And they were better than any upper class we had. And my old man and I and the rest of our staff sat down and said, all right, how are we going to play this? And I said, listen, you can play the upperclassmen and we can win seven games. Or you can play the freshmen and we can win six, seven games. You know, what difference does it make? Mm -hmm. Those guys are the future. And, you know, we kind of implemented that. So that grouping, that freshman class, guys by the name of Damon Alston, Marcus Aiken, Rob Kanata, Justin Kanata's brother, Ryan Moore, mm -hmm. um, you know, Byron Jones was in that mix. He was a year younger than those guys. Mm -hmm. But those kids, we had like a five, six year run where we were really, really good with, and we're doing it the right way. We didn't have any six, eight, you know, division one kids running around. We had a bunch of five foot nine, yeah. you know, we had a division one football player. We had a division mm -hmm. one baseball player. Yeah. We had some guys that were athletic <laughs> and I, I'll tell you, Chris, the biggest thing, the, the reason for the resurgence and for the consistency is, is my father's willingness to adapt. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of guys in that position doing it for that long probably wouldn't say, okay, let's scrap everything. Let, let me let this young guy, you know, kind of implement what he thinks. And that's what he did. He gave me a ton of control, probably more than he wanted to relinquish. Um, and we both collaborated amongst with the rest of the staff on how to keep the consistency going. And we, we had to find ways to convince people to want to spend $10,000 a year to go to high school. Uh, and we felt that we could do that by promoting ourselves that we are basketball purists. I ran an AAU thing. I started an AAU club. Our guys were going to play all season. We were going to prepare them for college. We were going to do the best. You know, we started to do that from within and people took notice. Um, I didn't have to, you know, the old adage is the recruitment, private schools, recruit, recruit. I didn't have to, man. I didn't have to. Like mm -hmm. if you were a hooper, and you were in the region, and you had expendable income, you were coming to St. Paul, mm -hmm. uh, unless you were some lineage somewhere, which is fine. But I, I didn't have to, we didn't have to go and do anything. The product that we put on the floor, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the quality of coaching that, that Steve Phelps would put forth, combined with the resources that we provided for our guys, uh, I, I just think that that spoke volumes, and it really allowed the snowball to continue and then it was just a matter of just kind of managing it. And one of the best things that Coach Phelps does is he gets those guys to buy in, man. And when you can get high school kids to buy in, you're going to do a lot with a little. And he, and he does. I say all the time he does. And it's not a slight to any of the players that we've had. Mm -hmm. But he does the most with the least, I think, of, of anybody around. No, I, I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I like – the one thing I noticed about Coach Phelps, because I had an opportunity to be able to do one game for St. Paul last year when I was doing the game down in Naugatuck, and it was yep. a one-sided game. I think a lot of people knew that because Naugatuck, very talented. They're loaded. Yeah. Exactly. Loaded is a correct word I would use for that. Yep. But yep. the one thing I noticed about your father was before the game, and I told you just before we came on, very polite, very respectful. I mean, I'm 27. I'm some broadcaster. He doesn't even know me. He could think I'm some hot shot. Very honest, very respectful to me, and I couldn't have asked for anyone better. And then during the game, I noticed how even with the game being so blown out, he was doing it the right way, putting yeah. the starters in and then not in, trying to mix people out. Yeah. But he was still yeah. coaching, and he coached from yeah. the beginning of tip until the end of the game. And you, as a you know, as a player, you have to admire that because he he's going to coach no matter what the score is. Sure. Yep. And that's, again, and that's kind of this whole thing. And I would say to him, and my father is easily probably the most humble person I know. And I would tell him, I said, listen, man, people come here for you. Like mm -hmm. you've been here that long. You're well known. You're well respected. 
Um, and, and and guys, people who are well, people who are tied in, people who understand, like they're going to want their kids to play for you. Uh, and and it's a testament because they see those things that you're mentioning. Uh, you know, he coaches the entire game. He doesn't care if he's up 30. The amount of times are you mentioned, you know, that we've had, you know, we got into some spats over the years. <laughs> Every year, you can ask my, my, my best friends, anybody else on our staff, they'll tell you there's at least a two-week period where Brendan Phelps and Steve Phelps won't talk to each other. Really? Um, but some okay. of our spat, but it never affected our ability to come in and coach. Yeah. You know, I'd show up, I'd come into the office, coach, what's up, what do you need from me? I never called him dad. I, never, I haven't called my father dad since I was probably 13 years old. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I always called him coach. I played for him, and then mm-hmm. I worked for him, and I wanted to make sure there was a chain of command or whatever, but... You know, our biggest blowouts would be he'd turn around and I'd be like, hey, we're up 30. Like, easy. Pull it back a little bit. And you mm-hmm. look up at the score. Oh, yeah, I didn't even know. I, didn't even know. I had no idea. All right, well, what are we going to do? So he does. He gets lost in it, man. He's super passionate about it. Mm-hmm. The guy's 64 years old, Chris, and he still goes to practice every day and runs the practice. Like, you don't sit on the side. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he runs a practice. He still goes to college practices. He's still – he evolves with the game. He calls me daily. Hey, you know, we're this, that, what do you about the, you know, can I run this stuff? What kind of this action? Or, you know, what, what is this terminology? You know, he's very, he's just very, very in tune with it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's why he'll be around for a while, man. I think the the thing, once I had been there for a while, I think the understanding was, all right, mm-hmm. coach Steve Phelps is going to retire and Brendan's going to slide in here one day. And I used to tell people, I said, I, I'm, I'm not going to be around that long. <laughs> like, the guy's not going anywhere. I mean, he's he, and he's always said he'll know when the time is right. Guys have told him that. Uh, mm-hmm. But the longevity of and consistency of success, Chris, there's a multitude of factors. But ultimately, it comes down to the fact that you have a guy at the head of the who's the head of the snake, mm-hmm. who who sets the tone for things to be done the right way every day in practice, every game you play. And that tone gets sent all the way down from his staff, all the way to his players. And he does a great job. And I thought we always did a tremendous job at St. Paul's. We put a lot of responsibility on our players, especially our upperclassmen. Uh, you know, one of the things we tell our guys, and when I left a couple of years ago and I met with our team personally, mm-hmm. I ended with with this. And I tell we tell our guys all the time, listen, man, you got, you got one job here. It's not to win a state championship. It's not to this. Your job is to make sure that when your time is done and you leave here, th- that you're leaving the program in a better place than where you found it. And I felt super, I was not, it was not easy for me to leave St. Paul. 13 years of my life, uh, school that I had uh, attended, mm-hmm. kids that I had relationships with. Uh, and, and, you know, I told them that. I said, listen, the only reason I feel I can leave right now is because when I got here mm-hmm. and when I'm going, you guys are in a better place and nothing has changed, man. I've been gone two years. Those guys are still winning 10 plus games. Yep. They're still, you know, they're still competing at a high level. He's still coaching his ass off. It's, it, mm-hmm. it had nothing to do with me and it has everything to do with, with the culture that he's created and the luck that we had of getting a couple of years in a row where he had some good players mm-hmm. and that kind of helped it out. But that's, I mean, that's, that's all it is, man. You know, it's... work hard. It's a and humble way for you to look at that, honestly. And I've told you, and you probably won't believe me until you know, until I take a dirt nap. Talented player <laughs> that you were, you won a lot as far as awards. You've done a great job as a coach, both with St. Paul and then now with Post. You deserve the credit for that, and I'm sure your father, if I, if I ever had a chance to talk with him, I'm sure he would say the same thing. But you deserve a lot of credit as well because you were able to kind of help build that foundation because your father could not do that alone. He needed you alongside him, and now you're being able to carry that into post. I mean, congrats to you, man, seriously. Thank you, thank you. One of the best things he ever did for me was he told me to get away from him. You know, he'd tell me, listen, man, you want to coach, you want to coach at a high level. He says, you got to get out of here. You Mm -hmm. you know, go work camps, go to practices, go. So I was running around just like he was. Um, And the cool thing is now Mm -hmm. that I'm at, like, I pop into a Fairfield practice to go see Coach Jay Young's team and. My father could be sitting in there, walk in, and he's already there. I don't even know, but um, <laughs> yeah, like he, it's a, uh, it's pretty. It's, it was a pretty special experience, um, and and it's it's um, it was very rewarding to have played for him. 
mm-hmm. but it was more rewarding to have coached for him because of the success that we were able to have. You know, we were at a wedding, uh, Byron Jones and I, and, and all of us were at a wedding this summer for one of, one of these guys. And there's 15, 20 of us hanging around, and you know, my father's there, same wedding, and it, it, it's uh, it's pretty special, man. So it wasn't easy. I don't have any regrets, but I, I would be a liar if I didn't tell you that I still see those those faces and those looks of, you know, man, I can't, like, for real, like, you're, I'm like, oh, man, like, uh, it's tough, it's tough, but. Well, funny story, Byron Jones, he was, when he was in high school, I was in high school, I went to Sacred Heart. Be, yeah. Beyond the point, destroyed my, my high school football team, killed him. <laughs> and then, to put insult to injury, I'm a Cowboys fan, played for my <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, and now left yeah. to go to Miami, and he, I'm sad he left. I really am. Listen, Byron Jones, in, in my tenure at St. Paul, there was not – I'd have to say Byron Jones and Matt Gary. Mm-hmm. So Matt Gary is at UConn right now who's playing as a walkout. Mm-hmm. Matt Gary and Byron Jones probably the two most slighted guys that I ever coached at St. Paul. And, you know, Byron was a 6'1 center, and he should have easily been all state. He could average like 20 and 12. Mm-hmm. He was an absolute freak show. And we thought it was a home run. We're like, there's no way that this kid, and he got hosed. It was unbelievable. We couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. And then Matt Gary kind of same thing. Matt Gary, you know, but then this kid goes on. He's a Division One football player. He's an all-pro. And then now people look back, and you'd see, like, his high school statistics, and you'd say to yourself, oh, man, this kid must have been all league, all kind of – no, too many accolades in the fall. They hosed him. But, you know, man, listen, man, Byron is all time. I just talked to him the other day. Uh, after he signed with Miami, I posted some video to the St. Paul alumni page, and mm-hmm. his beard was looking terrible. And I called him and I said, "Bro, eighty million, you can't, you know, you can't get somebody to come in here and clean you up." And he's still, oh, shut up. He's, he hasn't changed a bit. Kid hasn't changed a bit. Has not changed a bit. Same dude. If you can Same somehow, dude, some can way, change. I got, I would love to have him on this sometime. I really would. Oh, uh, he would do it in a second. I don't, I don't want to speak for him, but he'd do it in a second. Like he's, he's, he's that good. Of a human being, man, has changed really? a bit. He's the best, the and absolute see, best. And the reason, another reason, he's a Connecticut kid who's now doing big things, and that's why I do this because yeah. coaches, players, I don't care, broadcasters, it doesn't matter. This show is built to be able to get people who are in Connecticut, not just to get past this quarantine, but something to be mm-hmm. able to show that Connecticut does have talented people, and other people around the country need to see that. Yeah, man, he, I, I'm telling you. He's, you do it in a second. Great dude. I would love Great that. Dude. But coach, thank I'll, you. I'll, you know, thank you so much. I really do appreciate taking the time. I I don't want to keep you away from your family. I know that's more no, important. Please do. Don't, don't make me go back. <laughs> hey, you have a beautiful family. Let's be honest. Here. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. My uh, I, I'm a I'm a lucky man. I'm a lucky man. You are for lucky sure. But I would, I, you know, I'd love to be able to come back on sometime in the near future, and then either before the season, during the season, when there will be a season, hopefully next year. <laughs> you know, I would love to have you back on anytime. You're always Absolutely, welcome. man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime, anytime. Thanks for having me, Chris. No problem, man. Anytime. All right. That'll wrap things up here on the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone.